Hello and welcome to Teens Topics, where you'll find education easy. First off, I'm sorry it's been a while, <coughs> six months, <coughs> but I've been tied up with tons and tons of things, like getting this little rascal. But anyway, here's what you'll be finding in this week's episode. Ozone, the thing that protects us from the sun's UV radiation. Without the ozone layer, us humans would burn massively, like really bad burns. Wow, that was graphic. But this is quite possibly what could happen to us if we carry on this way. And when I say this way, I mean destroying the ozone layer by releasing damagingly deadly chemicals that break down this layer dramatically. So this ozone actually protects us by 97% of all UV radiation. So instead of looking like this on a day on the beach, you might possibly look like this. In Antarctica, there is a problem. Since 1980, a hole has been growing in the ozone. And if you would rewind a bit, you may remember something. <laughs> So this ozone actually protects us by 97% of all UV radiation. So, if you think about that, on a normal hot, cloudless day, the burns you get are only 3% of the UV radiation. So if you times those burns by 32.3 times, that is what you would get without the ozone being there to protect you. Which is rather scary. In 1987, governments signed up to an international agreement to stop using CFCs by 2000, except for the essential safety uses. And even though it is 14 years later, they have seemed to live up to their agreement, but it is taking a tad longer than originally thought. However, all these gases, even though reduced, are still hovering around the atmosphere and will remain there constantly, destroying our ozone. It may even take hundreds of years for them to be degraded again. So if it does take hundreds of years, the ozone hole in Antarctica may be almost triple its current size. How is ozone formed and destroyed? Well, when an oxygen atom absorbs UV radiation, it splits, forming two lone oxygens. But these particles need a partner, so there is three ways of doing so. Number one, it can join another lone oxygen to make a pure one. Number two, it can join a pure oxygen to create an ozone atom. Or finally, number three, it can join an ozone atom to create two O2 which is two pure oxygens joined together. <laughs>